Okay, so we're still continuing on with 3.2. Um, here we have this question that says, since quadratic functions and cubic functions are both in the polynomial family, poly again means many, nomial means terms, so there's many terms um, of functions, we would expect them to share some common characteristics. List the similarities between f of x, x cubed, and g of x of x squared. So um, some of you came up with really good characteristics, so I'm just going to copy and paste ones that I see that are worth mentioning. There's a lot of them, okay? There's, there are a lot of them, okay? Don't think, oh, Ms. Jonathan, do we have to list all those? They really want you to be able to, like, kind of, like, um, talk to them with um, some kind of, like, I understand what I'm talking about. So they both share points 0, 0, and 1, 1, and they and both go up. Is that true? Do both of them go up? Is that necessarily true? So I understand what you're saying, but it because there's a little bit of vague there, I think there needs to be a word on in there. Okay. Um, so I do like this part right here. They have the same point. They both go through zero, zero and one, one. So both graphs intercept at point zero, zero and one, one. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it. It's faster for me to copy and paste rather than snip. Ooh, it's going to give me all this. That's interesting. I gave you a citation. Good job, yo. Okay, so both graphs intercept um, at points 0, 0, and 1, 1. And you could see that when we were graphing them together. Um, they have the same points. Both points have the same points. They both. I'm just reading through. Um, so I don't like this they both go up business because that's not very clear. If I told you, hey, look at the graphs, they both go up. Here's my graphs. So here's x to the third, and here's x squared. Do they both go up? I understand what you're saying, but it could be a little bit clear. What can we say that's a little bit more clear? Yeah, someone said they go up on the right side. Very good. So when you say they go up, right, um, you're talking about the function increasing. Um, they're increasing. They're increasing functions. Does that make sense? Or um, something along those lines. Someone said use the term on the right side, right, on the right side. So yes, so we can talk about intervals of increase. That's really good. Um, we can also talk about domain and range. Um, so what are the common characteristics? Is the domain the same for both of them? What's the domain for both of these functions? We already figured out x cubed is um, all real numbers. What about the domain for x squared? Look left to right. Do you see any values that are being excluded? Yeah, it's just all real numbers, very good. So here I'm going to do all real numbers. You can also do the fancy number, the fancy R, right? Is the range the same? Now look from the bottom to the top for red and then the bottom to the top for blue. Are those ranges the same? Are there any values not excluded for red? We already figured this out earlier. It's, it is all real numbers. But what about for blue? Are there any values excluded from bottom to top? Look, like pretend this is your eyes. Look from here and you're scanning for blue, scanning for blue, scanning for blue. And you're like, oh, here's blue. And you're scanning and scanning and scanning. So what would the range be for um, my blue x squared function? Yeah, it's from zero to infinity. So our range is not the same. So I need to erase range. Very good. Um, someone talked about an interval of increase interval of increase. Now the interval of increase for our cubic function, we already figured out is from negative infinity all the way up here, right? Because we pretend that we're on a roller coaster from the left to the right. And if we're going up on that roller coaster, that means that it's an interval of increase. Is the interval of increase the same for our um, x squared function? And everybody says, no, Ms. Johnson, but they both have an interval of increase. Where, where do they have an interval of increase that they have in common? Someone earlier said from zero to infinity. That is exactly correct, right? That's in exactly the correct. So they both have an interval of increase from zero to infinity. 
Um, I'm gonna, I can't type that word in there. Um, what else? You guys talked about zero, zero. Um, oh, what about this word? Do you, have you guys, do you guys remember this from um, integrated one? You, it's, it's a while ago, but do you guys remember that the difference between discrete and continuous? Discrete and continuous. So continuous means like it's a smooth function, like it's a good roller coaster track to ride on. Like there's no holes, there's no like sharp, you know, um, places that are missing. So this is considered both, they're both continuous. They're both continuous. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna remind you is back over here when we were in all of these, if I was, if I change this cubic to a squared, do you have to, do I have to teach you completely new how to graph or do they, do they shift the same? Do they transform the same? And the answer is yes, they transform the same. Um, both functions transform. Well, I should use can be shifted and reflected and oh this is not good it's like I was trying to make like a table I'll just continue this on right it's the same okay okay so this last little question before we um kind of finishes, as you can see from the graph of f, f of x is x cubed, there are some real differences in cubic functions and quadratics. Each of the following statements describes one of those differences. Explain why each statement is true by completing the sentence. Okay, so this is an important part here. So part of you as a mathematician goes like this. I can find the pattern. I can tell you why they're different. And I can explain why those differences kind of matter. So I'm going to peek at your, your guys' answers here so for this next one, right? It says, what does it say? One more time. Uh, over here, this is what. So as you can see from the graphs, there are differences. Explain why each of the sen sentences are true based on these. So really hint, hint, good test question right here. So it says, um, well, the first one was, oops, I should have like looked at that. It says the range of f of x and x cubed is negative infinity to infinity, but the range of g of x, x squared is zero to infinity because, so let's look at what some of your classmates put. Yeah, because it's only graphed on the positive part of the graph and it doesn't touch the negatives. Very good. x squared, I can never get a negative number out of there. Very good. So if you don't have that as a part of it, put it there. Let's see, let's put anything different. Yeah, x squared doesn't, um, negative and continuously are not, um, what are they called? Those two are not, what is the word? Those don't oppose each other. These two are mutual exclusive. Continuously just means that it continues, like it's a good railroad track, right? Oh, there's no like holes. Like, it doesn't go, eh, stops here. And there's a big gap. And then it continues here. That's a horrible roller coaster, right? Like air. Um, okay. Um, so I didn't see a lot of like super strong answers. So let's go over this together really quick. So um, I do agree with that one person. Um, if you think about x squared, when you square a number, is it ever going to be negative? If you square a number, is it ever going to be negative? And the answer is no. So the reason why the range of x squared is zero to infinity is because you can, I can't square something and it turns out to be negative, right? There's no output that I can get that's negative infinity. Can you do that with x cubed? Can you think of a number that when I cube it, it'll be a negative answer? Can you think of a number that when I cube it, it'll be a negative answer? Everyone's like, yeah, give me an example. Give me an example of a number when I cube it, it's a negative answer. So what cubed gives me negative 
What cubed gives me a negative answer? Yeah, any negative number. So someone says negative one, very good, negative one. Someone says negative two, very good, uh, negative eight, right? And that's shown in the graph, right? If I show you this graph, if I show you this graph here, I'm asking, hey, where do you see what number when I cubic gives me a negative number? That's all these numbers over here. So just give me any negative number that you wanted, right? Versus x squared, right? X squared. Give me a number that when you square it, it gives me a positive number. I mean, sorry, the other way. Give me a number that when you square it, it gives me a negative answer. And you're like, Miss Johnson, it doesn't live down there. Therefore, that's why the range is from zero to infinity, right? So does everybody have a better understanding of how to answer this question? The range of f of x is negative infinity to infinity, but the range is of x squared is zero to um, infinity. Does everybody have a clear understanding of this? For me, because I think of like, I like to think about the picture. I think about this picture. Oh yeah, the range is, yeah, this range doesn't touch the bottom. Wait, why doesn't it touch the bottom? Is it like hot coals? Like what's making it not touch the bottom? Oh, it's not gonna touch down here because you can't square a number and it come out negative. It doesn't work like that, right? Very, very good. Okay, let's continue. It says for f of x, for x being bigger than one, f of x is bigger than g of x because y. So again, I'm gonna go back to my picture. Uh, maybe I need to snip my picture. Let me grab my picture real quick. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Let me snip this picture. So I, um, um, my hope is that you, where is my snip? Oh, it's hiding behind my Zoom. Um, so I hope that you understand that I want you to use a calculator, but it's useless if you don't understand what they're talking about. So here, looking at this picture, read this again. It says for X bigger than one, so you're looking at one and to the right, you're looking to the right. So you're looking in this area here, F of X. So that's, uh, let's see. That's the red function. Red is bigger than blue. Why is red bigger than blue? Why is red taller than blue? Yeah, it goes up faster. Like, what would you rather have? Like, if you're, if you're, if your dad said, I don't know, maybe a rich uncle, your rich uncle came to you and said, hey, I'm going to put your money in an account. Which account do you want it to be in? And you're like, uh, what? what's the difference between the account? Well, the first account grows by cubes. No accounts grow by cubes. Okay. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Uh, not consistently anyway. So do you want it to be in the cubic account or the quadratic account? Okay. Which account do you want it to be in? The cubic account or the quadratic account? Everyone's going to say the cubic account because it grows faster. It has a faster rate of um, change, right? And you can put, because it's cubic, it grows faster, it has a faster rate of change. All of those are great. Okay. Everybody good on that? So this question is talking about from here and on. This question is talking about from in between zero and one. So just imagine blowing up this little tiny square right here. So from, from zero to one, g of x is taller than f of x because g of x is taller than f of x because why? Oh, wait, Ms. Johnson, you just told us to choose the, the, the one on the right. Assuming that your uncle is starting you off with at least a dollar, you'll be fine, okay? Except for a dollar when he cubes it is just a dollar. So a dollar and a penny, maybe anything bigger than a dollar. So why is this one true? Why is why is the blue faster than the red in in this little square? Kind of, but it has to do with which numbers are here. What numbers live between zero and one? Give me a number that lives between zero and one. What number lives between zero and one? 
Yeah, 0 0.5 or just one half. Is that okay? So I want you to cube one half and then I want you to square one half versus one half squared. Uh oh, we lost some people. They were participating and then they just stopped. Is this too confusing, guys? You guys got this. Look at this picture. So can you do that for me really quick? Can you cube one half? What's one half cubed? Yeah, one half cubed is zero. Oh no, I like fractions. It's one eighth. One half squared is one fourth. So when you're cubing numbers that are small, just like when you're multiplying, right? You know how like when you were younger, you thought when I multiply, the numbers get bigger. And then you got introduced to fraction multiplication or decimal multiplication. Was that statement true? Does multiplication always get your numbers to be bigger? Everyone says yes or no. It's not a trick question. Does, frac does multiplication always make your numbers bigger? The answer is no. Why, why not? Right. So when you were younger, the answer is yes. Right. If you go up to like a, I don't know, like a third grader, if you say, if you say, hey, tell me about multiplication, they'll say, oh, the numbers always get bigger. And that's mostly true, except for when you get into fractions, like in fourth and fifth grade or fifth and sixth grade, then your numbers, you realize that fractions, when I multiply a fraction by a fraction, the number actually gets smaller because you're taking portions of it. Right. So clearly here, what would you rather have a fourth of a brownie or Miss Johnson's amazing pumpkin muffins, which would we rather have half of them? I mean, sorry, a fourth of a uh, pumpkin muffin or an eighth of a pumpkin muffin. And someone's like a fourth Miss Johnson because a fourth is bigger. That's why the blue is bigger because between zero and one, something funny happens with multiplication, right? Very good. Okay, so do you feel better about these answers here? So I don't know if you noticed, but every single time, what did I use? The graph, okay? All right, very good.